Okay, I understand that this may not be perfectly clicking, but I'm gonna talk you through, close that one end, and then if you watch the examples and work through the worksheet, hopefully, I think, well, not hopefully, I think that'll make it click, but as always, if it's not clicking, um, shoot me an email. Now, um, close that one end, our rule is, we always have an anti-node at the open end and a node at the closed end. So in this case, we're going to have a node at the one and an anti-node at the other. Sound is a transverse wave, but we're going to draw them as, sorry, I said it backwards. Sound is a longitudinal wave, but we're going to draw them as transverse to help picture it a little bit better. If we've got a pipe, a column that's closed at one end, open at the other, the longest standing wave that would fit in there, which is going to mean longest wavelength, which is going to mean the lowest frequency, has a node at one end and an anti-node at the other. So the longest one would be kind of this shape that you see in there. That's half of the football shape. A football shape was half of a wavelength. So we've got half of a half of a wavelength squished into the length of the pipe. That means a quarter wavelength is in the length of the pipe. If this was, say, a, a glass bottle, if you blew slowly over the end, you're going to play a low note. If you blow harder over the end, you're going to jump to the next standing wave. It starts at a node, but instead of ending at the first anti-node, it swoops to the next anti-node. So we get that shape. It's We've squished more wavelength in there, so it's a shorter wavelength, so it would be a higher note. Uh, that shape, we've got a football and then a half of a football, so we've got a half plus a half of a half. That's three quarters of a full wavelength. Uh, this first one, sorry, I skipped over this. This first one we call the first resonance, and it's got one quarter of a wavelength. The second resonance has got the one quarter plus, a, plus one half. If we could blow harder again and jump up to the next resonance, the standing wave would look like this. Note at the closed end. Not to the first antinode, not to the second antinode, but we end our standing wave at the third antinode. So we get that cool shape. We've got the quarter over here, plus a half gets us from there to there, and a half gets us to there to there. So two halves plus a quarter, two halves and a quarter is one and a quarter, or five quarters. There's a pattern through here as well. We start off at a quarter, and every time we jumped resonances, we got half a wavelength more. So we increased by half a wavelength from one uh, resonance to the next, to the next, to the next. Same kind of logic as when I talked about the recorder. If you're playing something like a trumpet or a bugle, a bugle is a really good one. Uh, Google what a bugle is. It's basically a brass instrument that you can't change the length of. It's just one length. Um, if we keep the length constant, then you can't play a whole bunch of notes. You would play a kind of a relatively low note with your first resonance. Then when you blow harder, you would jump to the second resonance, which would be higher. It would literally be a jump. Then if you blow harder again, you would jump to the third resonance. A jump again. You wouldn't slide from note to note. You would just, if you don't change the length, you would just go from one to the next, to the next, to the next. If you've got an instrument like a slide whistle or a trombone that you can change the length of, then you can play all sorts of different notes. Since a trombone kind of slides from one length through basically all the lengths as it gets longer and longer, you basically play all the notes. So you could slide from a low note, you could slide all the way through the notes to a high note. I'll see if I can find a YouTube clip or something of trombones or Google it on your own to watch trombones or slide whistles to see how that works. Uh, here's another example. Um, 30 centimeters long and second resonance. So in disguise, second resonance tells you what the standing wave looks like. Remember, you got to follow the rule. Node at one end, and you're going to the second anti-node. From the picture and the length, you can figure out the wavelength. From the temperature, you can figure out the speed. And putting it all together, once you know those two, then you can figure out the frequency. Uh, take some time, watch the video of that solution. There's a worksheet with more to practice. Um, I think I even have other videos with air column questions solved, so I will add a link here uh, to more, more questions solved. And here's a check-in for you to do on this topic. I hope it clicked. I hope it resonated with you. And uh, if not, email me if you have any questions.